Do you have a terrifying diagnosis? Did the doctor tell you that you only have few years to live? Do you feel that the doctor's treatment was unfair and unjust? If your answer is yes to all, then all you need is phenomenology. Phenomenology is a powerful tool for your mind that enables you to live a healthy life no matter how gravely sick you are. My name is Mohammed Salman and this is my book review on Illness by Havi Carell. Carol is a philosopher and a lecturer at the University of Bristol in the United Kingdom. She is also a patient of a rare lung disease called the lymphangioleomyomatosis, also called LAM. LAM is a systemic disease that targets the lungs and then eventually targets different organs of the body, causing severe disability. The book starts when she discovers her diagnosis, which obviously comes to her as a shock. She asks the question, what should I do now? And the, and the doctor, who is a radiologist, says, I don't know, I don't treat, I just diagnose. He hands over a medical textbook and points out an area for her to read. She comes across this line that says, prognosis is 10 years from the onset of symptoms. This discovery is an overwhelming impact for her, which was complemented with a lot of thoughts about death, about health, about her illness, and about the all other aspects of her, of her disease and the possible treatment and cure and also access to different sorts of community groups where she could talk about her disease. And for the clinicians, it was more about the new and exciting discovery of this disease. Carol identified a gap between herself and the medical approach to the disease. She calls the medical approach as a naturalistic view or the third person view, which is purely biological and objective. Carol's illness starts taking over her body her routine activities start becoming more like a task. For example, if she walked uphill or went out cycling, she would have to take a few minutes to take her breath. Her lung functions decline quite rapidly throughout the story. She starts developing severe body pains because of the cancer-like features that start taking over. This whole physical process caused her body to disclose signs and symptoms of her illness in the public. People witnessed this language and started getting an altered perception of her illness. For example, she was hanging on to her oxygen cylinder with a nasal cannula so that she would get some good assistance with breathing. People found it easy to simply ignore her presence as they wouldn't know how to respond to her sick body. They felt awkward and embarrassed to communicate with her as they couldn't handle the scene of suffering. Similarly, her friends sh showed the same response. From a personal perspective, her illness has caused a major physical and social impact that is quickly transforming her way of living. From a medical perspective, her experiences are translated into history, investigation, diagnosis, and treatment. Well, in other words, the naturalistic approach fails to capture the personal experiences she's having. Carol proposes to address her personal experience through phenomenology, which is, a, which is a description of lived experience. Now this review is divided into four main areas. The first is philosophy, second health and happiness and illness, third is fearing death, and fourth is the application of phenomenology in medicine. Carol employs philosophy that is influenced by a number of ancient philosophers addressing her perceptions and personal experiences. But the first part is philosophy of illness. Marlowe Ponty, a French philosopher, proposed that a human body is made of both object and subject. The object is something that can be seen or that can be weighed, which is naturalistic. Whereas for subjective, it is, it is full of sensations, perceptions, and emotions. Well, both of these are in constant agreement when the body is healthy. In illness, there is a disturbance in that agreement. There is no harmony between the subjective and the objective. And so there's a lot of attention required to perform daily routine tasks. For example, if Carol had to climb upstairs in her house, she would have to plan out her entire day to minimize the use of the stairs. As time passed by, Carol realized that she had no control over her body. Instead, she had a complete control over her emotions. And she decided to use those emotions as a part of the living experiences. And through that, she formed a transformed way of living, and she calls it health with an illness. Martin Heidegger, a German philosopher, proposed the notion of projection, which is the ability of humans to do something in order to become something tomorrow. The notion tells us 
that humans are always engaged in projects that are always futural. Carol twists this notion because it doesn't really apply to people who are on dying beds or have a severe illness that prevents them to do anything or have the inability to be. So what she proposes is to change the scope of the project to remove the old undoable projects and to add in new doable projects that really appreciate the newly acquired limited abilities from the illness. Now there are three philosophies that have supported the concept of finding happiness within illness. The first one is Epicurean's hedonism suggests that the pleasure is when you gain control over pain, not beyond that, because as you go beyond that, it leads to materialism and overindulgence. Von Goethe implies that one shouldn't live in the fearful future or in the unpleasant past, but rather in the present as the present contains happiness. Pierre Hadot says not to wait to obtain happiness, as happiness exists in the present. So Kara proposes that one should focus on the present abilities and experiences instead of worrying about the future or the past. This is a way of avoiding the suffering caused by illness. The third part is fearing death. How can one live a good life when, he's, when he or she is plagued by death? Well, like anyone else, Carol fears death. She takes it as the next worst thing after her diagnosis. She supports the notion of non-existence asserted by Epicurus, a Greek philosopher. Now, Epicurus proposes that both body and soul are made of atoms. When a person dies, both of these disintegrate, thus leading to non-existence. Hence, there is no pain or any pleasure in death. It's simply non-existence, hence there is no reason to fear death at all. Heidegger defines death literally as nothing. Death means ends to life. Death allows us to appreciate that life is finite, not infinite. Hence, Carol implies that life is neutral. It's filled with good things and bad things. Everyone is deprived of something and content with something. So if you die, you're not deprived, you've just reached the end. The f this form of ideology helps dissipate negativity emerging from perceptions of death and thoughts of past and future and this enables one to live in present in tranquility. Now the first argument is that Carol's work is a mix and match of different philosophical insights making her approach rather unoriginal and open to criticism in the field of philosophy. However, since the approach is highly subjective, phenomenology is applicable in many different aspects based primarily on experience. Like for example, Susan Sontag's work on illness as metaphor defines that health and illness both are different formats. Both have different passports, one is good, one is bad. But as Carroll says that health and illness are not the opposites, they exist together and they do not cause any deprivation. The second argument is that since phenomenology requires narration of personal experiences, the question arises, what about people who can't narrate or don't see their lives like how story writers do? Also, there are non-narrators who don't maintain special interests in their past or future and absorb life events pretty well. Strawson proposes that there are other ways of improving life which does not require narrativity. And importing such narrative ideas or philosophical ideas can be very harmful to people who are psychologically destructive. Now, the third argument is about fearing death. Epicureans theorize that gods exist in tranquility and death is non-existence, so there's no need to fear death. Well, according to some critiques, this approach comes out pretty harsh, which can be controversial. Hence, the generalizability of this notion to healthcare is doubtful. Now, this brings us to the last part, which is the application of phenomenology in medicine. Well, Carol claims that in chronic illness, there's a feeling of alienation, anger, depression, and feeling of loss, which can't be explained in a biological context or with medications. These are the happenings of constraints of illness and fear of death. She proposes that the application of phenomenology in daily practice of medicine can potentially address these problems and provide a strong patient-physician relationship, thus improving care. In this sense, most of the reviewers completely agree with Carol, saying that there's a need for a fundamental rehumanization of the ways the society and the clinicians think about illness. In contrast to evidence-based medicine, phenomenological medicine utilizes narrative medicine, which leads to a lot of individual variation leading to complex questions that tends to get dismissed in the presence of evidence-based medicine. Carroll says that phenomenology does not dismiss medicine's naturalistic approach, it rather augments it. 
Well, there are a number of papers that show that evidence-based medicine and phenomenology are in argument or trying to disprove one another. Now the question is, can the naturalistic methodologies and the subjective art eventually work together as a meaningful and long-term intervention that improves health in a holistic view? Overall, Carroll has delivered a truly commendable narrative that maintains a good balance between pure philosophy and personal story, but somehow blurs out as you reach the end when it deals with fearing death and happiness in illness. Her disease attracts the reader and helps acknowledge that despite the breakthroughs and cures achieved, the current medical system is truly unfit to treat people who are in need of a type of care that is more personalized. The main strength of the book is that it encourages you to dig deeper into the, into the philosophical insights. However, these insights might not fully agree with your personal or religious understanding of life, illness and death. Thanks for watching the video. I've provided my references in the description below. Cheers.